What is up beautiful people, Corwin L. Gilliams here from CLG Lifestyle. Hope you guys are feeling blessed and grateful to be alive because guess what? Some people did not wake up today and some people are not going to go to bed tonight. So find a reason, you know, find something to be grateful about because that's just going to keep you pushing. That's just going to keep you in alignment and keep you pressing forward to receive more and experience more of God's goodness. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Also check out the links in my description box. That way you can access other things that I have going on as far as my ebook, as far as my podcast, as far as you know, other my um how you can support, email, all of that good stuff in the description box. So don't forget to check that out, right? So today, oh, I am Corwin L. Gilliams, the creator of CLG Lifestyle, influencing you to love self. Um, in order for you to be who God has called you to be, you have to have a relationship with God. And as a result of your relationship with God, you become, in spirit and in truth, who God has called you to be. And as a result, you begin to live the wonderful life that has been set apart for you because of God's goodness. So today, I just wanted to encourage you and to remind you of the power of affirmation, the power of meditation. Check out my ebook. The link is in the description box. It's called I King Amongst Kings, a King David Descendant, Affirmations for the King Who is Becoming with Insights Included. So part of my spiritual journey, or should I say as a result of my spiritual journey and spiritual growth, I've come to realize more than ever the importance and the power of affirmations or the importance and power of speaking God's words. So aka scripture so in the ebook towards the end there's 21 affirmations that i believe in that i've said that i say when i need to that i believe will help you to become help you to get your mind in order help you to get your spirit in order because i believe death and life is in the power of the tongue and so when we choose to speak life many of us have been brainwashed and programmed to speak death and to speak the lies of the enemy and as a result of our born again experience and the holy spirit living within us we now have revelation of god's desire for our lives our revelation of god's truth for our lives and as a result we're going to speak what god wants us to speak god has now changed or transformed our minds so now that so now we can uh, begin to meditate on god's word we can begin to discern and grow in the knowledge of God, we can begin to speak God's truth because there's power in scripture. And now that we know better, we're going to do better. So the affirmations in the book is to help the king who is becoming, you could be a man or a woman, but I'm a man. And so when I, uh, when I created this book, I thought of other men who have gone through the same things uh, that I've gone through as far as, you know, just abandonment, as far as being bullied, as far as sexual abuse, as far as just all the different things that the enemy hoped and thought would take us out but glory to god for us still being here and i know now that you know a lot of the things as men or women that we go through they are it transcends sex it transcends uh your biological makeup um because uh, mostly everything is spirit and so even with what i speak or what i affirm in, in the book you can change it to to include you you know and, and and put your pronoun in there if that makes sense so definitely check out the book i have a pay i have a an option that's for charge it's 499 four dollars and 99 cents but if you can't afford it there's also a free version so it just depends on where you are financially um i've been there i you know i've been there where you know i wanted something that i believed would help me spiritually or in other ways, and I couldn't afford it. So I understand that some people have the money and some people don't. If you have it, go ahead. Four ninety nine is nothing to you, right? Um, if you don't have it and you're broke, then you can also download it for free. I've provided two of the options in the description box. So again, you know, they say there is there's if there's there if there's no trials, there's no testimony. And so I've walked the walk when it comes to building my faith and believing that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I've had my personal encounter, my personal experience with God to know that let God be true and every man a liar. I've had my intimacy with God where I know God speaks to me just like he spoke to Jesus, just like he spoke to Abraham, just like he spoke to David, just like he spoke to Joseph. 
I know that I know that I know that God is God and I'm a beloved of God. I'm God's masterpiece. I'm God's child. I'm God's servant. I'm God's beloved. Okay. And these are all, all of the affirmations that I say in, in the book. And so we really have to really, 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 really value, really value our relationship with God above all else. Now, I know that we come from different places, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different genders, sexuality, things like that. As broken as you may come or as healed as you may come. What's most important is that God sent his son to die for sinners. He didn't come. Jesus didn't come for the, for the, for the healed or the whole. He came for the broken. He came for the sinners. He came for those who needed a doctor. And so we've received the ultimate doctor. His name is Jesus Christ. And through him, we have been restored to our right relationship with God. And as a result, we've defeated the works of the enemy. We've defeated, okay, all the things that the enemy was and has and was successful in, in, in keeping us down and keeping us believing that we were unworthy and, and, and inferior. God came in with his spirit, amen, and he restored our minds, he restored our hearts, he's given us a new heart, a new spirit, and now we have direct relationship with God, and as a result, we're going to live in a manner, in a way that God has predestined for us to live according to Ephesians 2.10. I'm just here to encourage you as a disciple of the Lord, as a vessel of the Lord, that God loves you. God wants the best for you. God wants you to thrive, not just survive. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to increase more and more in every aspect and all ways of your life. God wants you to become and maximize your potential, the potential that he's placed in you as a seed. Okay. God wants this, these things to flourish. He wants you to increase. He wants you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He wants you to become all and even more that he has died for you to become. Jesus died for us, okay? Not for us to, you know, be complacent, not for us to be comfortable in the foolishness that the enemy has caused us to believe is worth something. When the Spirit of God has fallen, fallen upon you, when the anointing of God has come upon you, God has now made you a force not to be reckoned with. You are now a new race of a person that the world has not seen. You now have an identity that can only come from God. And anything that God has established as his, anything that God has established as one to, as he did with Moses, as he did with the judges and the leaders that he had established to rule, even when the enemy came in, even when he had these, uh, uh, prophets and priests and judges had opposition. Ultimately, the ones who stood and stood by their God, the ones who believed that their God will deliver them. And I'm talking about the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the one who was obedient, the ones who were obedient when God said, be still. Okay. They were the ones who ultimately got the victory. They are the ones who ultimately, ultimately saw their enemies drowned. Okay. When Pharaoh decided to chase after Moses, after, after many warnings, you see, God will warn your enemies. Okay. God will warn the people whom the enemy is using to oppress you, to suppress you, to rob you of your identity, to keep you in bondage, to keep you from flourishing. God will warn these people, warn these people to the point where they know in their hearts what they're doing is wrong to, to, to the point where they know that, you know, let me just let this person go because I know that I can see now that this is not a regular person, that this person has the, the favor of God on their lives. But for whatever reason, the enemy be having these people wrapped around their fingers, wrapped around his fingers, causing them to do things that they don't even remember some of the wickedness that they do. It's interesting how some of them don't even remember. And this is why God says to forgive your enemies and basically not hold anything against them. Because a lot of the times these people are in bondage. A lot of the times, if not all the times, these people have been blinded by the enemy just and he and they're doing his works not even knowing that they're in bondage, okay? They're thinking that they have control. They're thinking that they're the ones who are in charge. They're thinking that they're the ones who got it going on. But ultimately, as we see with our spiritual eyes and the discernment, of the gift of discernment, we're seeing that these people are nothing. And I say nothing in that they're powerless. And so God says, you know, I want you to be as, as shrewd as a serpent, but as, as, as meek as a lamb. Right. In other words, God wants us to see the evil. Right. But don't allow it. Don't let the evil have you respond in ways that you become like these people. He wants you to see the evil because you're not stupid and you can't hide anything from God. Once you have the spirit of truth in you, you're going to see all things. OK, 
God wants you to take that to him. God wants you to cry out to him. God wants you to pray to him. God wants you to bless and pray for those who falsely persecute you and lie about you and say all manner of things about you. Okay, because of his name, because of the name of Jesus. Okay, that's the obedience that we need to abide by. That's the expectation and the standard that we need to subscribe to, to bless our enemies, not to not to get on their level and, you know, begin to plot and scheme. And don't get me wrong. I understand sometimes it's so hurtful, some of the things that people can do. And it can be a t temptation, you understand what I'm saying? Where you're like, oh, you want to get back at them. But as I've walked with the Lord and as I've said, God is no one to be played with. Okay, when God, many of you, you've been looking for loyalty and love and integrity. And God is the one, okay? God is the one that will show you loyalty, show you integrity, show you love. God says he has your back. God has your back. And let me tell you something, even if it's someone in the body of Christ, okay, if you're doing the right thing, if you are the one who's being most obedient to the Lord, the Lord is going to be most loyal, most, most faithful to you. Okay. And I'm not saying that God is, you know, God said, well, some people will say, okay, well, God is no respect of, of person. He is not. But guess what? Who was the one who was given all, all power and all authority of all things? Wasn't it Jesus? Why? Jesus was the one who was most obedient, most perfect, most faithful, most obedient. Okay. He was the one who did it. So as a result of his works and as a result of his faithfulness, he was awarded that jurisdiction. He was awarded, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the crown above all. Okay. So, so that is a testament and a revelation as to the more obedient you are, the more you grow in the knowledge and in the discernment of God, the more you power you get, the more revelation you get about who you are, and the more the more the more you can embody genuinely who God has called you to be and to be so without compromise. Okay? So that's about it. You know, just encouraging you to love yourself, love yourself in the context of how God wants us to love ourselves. How are we gonna know what love is if we've never experienced love? We experience love from love. So once you grow in your relationship with God and you value that, God is going to show you what love is. God is going to show you what um, what integrity is, what loyalty is. God is going to, especially as a man, God is going to teach you, you know, what it means to be a man and what it means to be a leader. So now that you, so now you can replicate that standard and that frame of reference in your personal life when it comes to you being a husband or when it comes to you being the leader that God has called you to be for his people in business in a in a marketplace or wherever okay so that's about it y'all if you want to support my platform you can do so again all the links are in the description box and I love to do this so if you want to support what I'm doing you know what to do talk to y'all later